Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. On this, I'm going to show you Joe Jackson. And so, I'm going to show you a couple clips that are really, they were really close to after, right after uh, Michael had passed away. I think both of them were actually within the first week, within a few days, actually. They're definitely before the memorial, both of the... Uh, Michael Jackson related conversations and then uh, then I'm going to show you a clip of Joe Jackson when he's uh, later in his life when he's uh, get almost uh, ready to pass away and, uh, and they're talking about Michael Jackson again but it'll be a little different thing so this first one's uh, it's, it's a four minute interview here and it's a uh, if you people weren't alive when this interview happened, it was like, whoa, <laughs> it was just like, what the hell? It's like classic Joe Jackson. Like when this happened, it's like, really, Joe, come on. It's like this whole thing, like they, they made a big deal about this. Actually, after this interview, there was a lot of talk about like, geez, did you see Joe? Geez, that interview. So, uh, so here, let me get, let me get this plan. CNN is live on the red carpet at the BET Awards, and so is the father of Michael Jackson. Uh, Joe Jackson joins us here tonight. How you doing, sir? How's the family holding up? I'm great. My family's doing pretty good. Yeah? Yes, they are. Uh, do you want to tell the last couple of days? I know it's been really tough for you guys. And? <laughs> and? Yeah, it has. <laughs> it has been really tough. Remember, we just lost the biggest star in the world, superstar in the world, so it's been tough. Why'd you... Yeah, so it's like the one thing about when he see when he speaks about Michael, there's just this way. We just lost the biggest superstar. It's, it's just there's this thing where he's never he never cares about Michael. It's about him and his family, and he, it's it's all about him. It's really crazy. Like what he said, "How you doing? I'm great, great. <laughs> oh, the family not so good. I'm great though, as always." <laughs> Oh, freaking Joe, man. You oh, decided to show up here tonight. Does it to, to pay tribute to your son? To make show, sure. Yeah, to show pictures of my son. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah Michael. Yes, yeah, Michael. I did. How is Mrs. Uh -huh. She's fine, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything you would like to share with the world about your son and about his legacy? Or Yeah, I want to get a statement here. Give me a statement here. Okay, anything you want to share about your son and his legacy? That's what he asked him. Oh, yeah, I got a statement over here. This <laughs> is going to come up and read a statement, and then uh, we'll talk more. With you. Oh, okay, God. this is from, written on behalf of Mr. Jackson and the family. Our family sincerely thanks all of you around the world for your love and support during our time of grief. Our oh, he's really grieving, huh? I'm doing great. <laughs> for their time of grief. But they always have to say, oh, thank you to the fans. and all That's where they get their money from and stuff. That's that's just like common. That's what got to happen. We love son. Michael Jackson loved you all. Michael's children are our first priority. Okay, Michael's children are our first priority, and that's because they got the money. They got Michael's money. That's why. We will have further announcements to discuss our plans going forward. Until such time, however, we have the personal and legal authority. Just, just for the, uh, also, he had asked him, give me a statement about Michael and his legacy. Oh, and this is all about him. See how I say this statement is all about, it's there. It's, <laughs> and it's crazy. Oh, yeah, I got a statement. Or to act. And solely, Catherine and I have authority for our son and his children. We wish to handle his memory and legacy with dignity. And, and get that money. For the Jacksons, <laughs> Wendell McMillan, and no one else has authority to speak on behalf of the Jackson family at this time. Thank you very much Thank for that. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you know, I was talking to you about, about the legacy that uh, Michael Jackson left. Do you think that the world even realizes uh, how big your son's legacy is? And now the uh, same to realize it now, but the only thing it is, I wish the world had to recognize him when you were living. <laughs> it's just crazy. This interview, the way he talks, and I, I, I wish the world would recognize him while he's living. Okay, <laughs> it's a thriller, King of Pop, and you know, like, oh, I mean, I understand how he could, there's a technicality, he could say the backlash and stuff, but it's just like, it's just weird. It's like, does this sound like a father of Michael Jackson? The king of pop, the, that's the kid that took his family out of Gary, Indiana. That The kid did that. He didn't do it. Without the kid, none of them get out. There was nothing that he was doing that was going to get them out without the kid. There's like no respect as his child. There's no respect for him as like what he did for their whole family. It's just like, it's weird. Because, you know, 
but right now he's bigger than ever now. But I wish he was here to see all this, to hear all this. Yes. Uh, yes. We've been hearing from uh, Reverend Sharpton and the Reverend Jackson that you had some concerns regarding uh, some of the, the last moments of the people who were around him in his life. Do you care to share that? Yes, yes. Listen, what, now, what was that? You, said you had some concerns about the, the, the positions and the people who were around him uh, the, during the last moments of his life? Yes, I am. I have a lot of concern. But what are your concerns about that? I, I can't get into that, but I don't like what happened. You don't like what This is my attorney here. Yeah. <laughs> this is my attorney. The guy is like... The interviewer guy, Don Lamont, he's constantly, he's digging, trying to like get like what the, like what you would be trying to do. He's trying to get questions about Michael Jackson, but it was Michael Jackson. <laughs> he was like, this is Michael Jackson just died. It's, you know, so he's, he's asking him, like, he's trying to get like serious, like Michael Jackson questions out of him. And this is like just within a few days for sure. It was really... <laughs> And Joe just is like, okay, well, hit my attorney. He says, you got anything to say about Michael's legacy? Oh, well, I got a statement. He says, I got a statement. The statement, we're in control of all of the money and the control. Nobody else can say anything. That's like his whole, it is just, it, this was, when it happened, it was really bizarre and stuff. And it gets, so it gets even more. There's he more here. <laughs> You're Lundell, right? So he says he has some concerns about the last moments of his son's life, about who may have been around him. Can you talk to us about that? Oh, we can't talk about that now. There's a second autopsy. Topsy, that's underway. <laughs> that's right. Don Lamont, like, Joe didn't really say that question. Don Lamont asked him a question about, do you have any... <laughs> <laughs> Don Lamont's all, do you have any concern about all the people who are around your people's life, the, do the doctors and all this stuff? And Joe just, first he says, huh, what? Yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I do. I do have concerns about that. It, I didn't like it. And then Don Lamont asks this, the attorney, the question in, in the phrase that, stated it as a question that Joe like stated that like he says yeah Joe Joe says he didn't like the people that were around did you hear the way he did that it was just like oh my god that was really like oh it was <laughs> we'll let that process take its course at this time we'll have more to be we'll have more to say about that at a later point about that um do you have you spoken at all to the doctor at, at all no, no, I have not. No. Do you guys have any? Do you know anything? Just so quick, while while you're speaking to the lawyer, Joe keeps bringing people out. Oh, he's like trying to talk to him about Michael Jackson. He like refuses. He like almost refuses to talk about Michael Jackson. And then he says, "Oh, you want me to talk about Michael Jackson? I'll bring the lady up. I got a statement." And then he's like, "Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to talk? Oh, yeah. Well, here's my lawyer. Bring my lawyer. I'm gonna get him. Let him talk." And then now that the lawyer, it brings up the other guy. This other guy, though, this guy actually, this is Marshall Thompson. I didn't know this back in the time and stuff, but when it, because when it happened, it was like one of those things, like Jesus Christ, Joe, you're out of control, right? But now, actually, I'm so into the Michael Jackson story. This guy in the white hat, that's Marshall Thompson, the singer of the Shy Lights. He was a big part of the Jacksons, all the Jacksons when they were touring around Chicago before they hooked up with the Bobby Taylor story and stuff. The guy that was actually taking them around Chicago is that guy. That's Marshall Thompson. He's actually a big guy in the Michael Jackson story. And it goes all the way back with Joe Jackson. This is where I go back with Joe Jackson. Now, Joe Jackson has a lot of history with old mu musicians and stuff around Chicago. He's more than what people know, a lot more. Mr. Jackson about funeral arrangements. Have you had time? Yeah, to we haven't gotten to that yet. See though, okay, so that's what I'm saying how early this have you got a funeral arrangement? We haven't got to that yet. We're not we're not even anywhere near the memorial yet at this time. Yeah, but we're working on that. Yeah. This is Marshall, yeah. I want to thank you. Yeah, thank you. Marshall. Would, uh, you said your wife is how what about See so like he keeps trying to talk to the Don Lamont again. He said it's just like, hey, this is Marshall. And so Don Lamont doesn't know who that guy is, which I didn't know who he was at the time, but now I do know who it is. And it's kind of one of those things. It's like, ah, uh, it would have been better if Don Lamont actually knew who he was. Cause that guy does deserve a lot of respect actually. And the Michael Jackson thing, he's somebody who actually should be known. Um, uh, so yeah, let's uh, get back to this. Oh, Janet and the rest of the family, the daughters and everything. They're all going fine. They're fine. I want to make this statement. He says, I want to make this statement. See, he won't talk about Michael. Isn't this, it is this, you guys, when this happened, I remember, it was crazy and stuff, but now watching it again and stuff, seeing how brutal, it's like, boy, he just keeps dodging, dodging. He, how is that possible? That's one of these things that's like, uh, 
Jesus. And so now watch this statement. He said, no, I got this good statement. I want to make this statement. You know, the guy's asking about Michael Jackson. No, no, I got this statement. Now watch, this was the one that when he said this was like, whoa. The real good statement here. Marshall and I, after we owned the record company called Tech Ranch Records. Okay, it's true about Blu-ray technology. And that's his next step. And that's your next step. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, instead of talking about Michael, come on up, Marshall. Let's tell him about our, our new business venture we got together going and stuff. So I mean, it's just like, this interview was just classically brutal, and it's so classic. And now, okay, if you ever could have got Joe Jackson being more of a sincere kind of person caring about Michael Jackson, that's why I'm showing this. This is one of the representatives. This is right after, you know, and you can see there's nothing there. And everything about him, it's all about him. Everything. Dad, then, uh, talk to us about the, the 60th year, 60th uh, wedding anniversary. As I understand, in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, the entire family was there, and Michael said that he had wanted uh, the members of his family to come up. My birthday? Your, your wedding anniversary, you oh, and Kat, oh, oh. in Las Vegas. Oh, that was fantastic. Yes, it was. A lot of people were there, and a lot of people I, did, I, I uh, was glad to see. It was a fantastic job that was done the wedding. It's the first one, though. No. That right there was crazy that when he said that it's like okay he was talking about his 60th wedding and he said he says you had your 60th wedding anniversary with Catherine in Vegas you had a big party and stuff right but he says right there he says oh that was the first one though it's like what was that the first time that he ever celebrated his anniversary oh that was the first one I I, I I like I'm not the I'm trying and it really seems like that's what he's saying and I don't understand when he says that's the first one I. Is, I what what is he saying that's first time he ever celebrated his anniversary? I don't know. It's weird. First wedding anniversary we had. See, and it came out fantastic. That's what um, he said. The first wedding anniversary we ever had. And it came out fantastic. Like, could he really mean that? That's he said it. <laughs> I Jesus Christ. It, this is just like on and on. It's just like oh wow. This is a train wreck, like they say. We had a lot fixing to happen, but I can't announce it right now, okay? Thank you, Mike. Joe Jackson, uh, the father of Michael Jackson, also here with uh, uh, friends and his, uh, his attorney. All his friends and attorneys, because he didn't know the, who the friends were and stuff. So that's that interview. That one was just brutal, right? Brutal, brutal Joe Jackson. So then, <sighs> this was another one. that This was just a couple days after Michael. This is... Uh, I think I know there's a couple interviews, so actually I'm I'm gonna watch this again. I think this was just a couple days, but it could have been a little later. I'm not. Let's listen again. Let's oh, do you have any any at all feel, uh, bad feelings about the way Michael was raised? I know you're denying the stories about violence, but what, as you look at it, were there any mistakes you made? I didn't make no mistakes, Larry, because Michael Michael was raised properly. He didn't uh, run the streets like uh, like uh, most of those. Other kids that was in his neighborhood. Well, Michael, Why did he say Michael, that you listen, were listen, home? listen now. You gotta understand me. Don't cut me off here, Larry. <laughs> Michael had claims that uh, he had a dual life. Michael never had a, He had his own brothers and sisters to play with. And that was the other kid. But most of those kids, that was Michael age during that time, they're not living now. Okay, now, like that right there, I remember when he said that. Uh... Look at the other guy too, his eyes went down when he said like, like mm, boy, you shouldn't have said that. Cause when you, I remember watching this live when it happened. And I remember when he said that, it, I always remember it's, that's why I knew to go looking for it. And it was like, oh. it's like, wow, Joe, did you just say that dude? It's like, this is, this, I was gonna say, this was right after Michael died. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this one was right, it was just a couple days. It was one of, it was that right after. And it's like, Mike, and so right after that, he's got so disconnected. He's so disconnected from the reality of Michael Jackson. He just died. It so doesn't matter to him whatsoever that he was so much concerned. He's more concerned about defending himself. Okay. And so, and then within the process of defending himself, he says, look at all those kids from around those, the, around the neighborhood that were Michael's age. He says, they're all dead now. It's like, well, your kid just died. Your kid's dead now too. Have drugs. Okay, that's why I'm like, this shit was hard, you know, and I remember this shit when it happened, and it's like, ugh. But now as you listen to it, this gets worse, too. This, like, this thing gets worse, too. There's more here, too. 
But just hearing this stuff, man, it's like, this is Michael's, is there anything? And see what he says, he says, no. When he says, I didn't do anything wrong, I, I raised him. And see, that's where he says, he's like, because I say, Michael was given to him. So in his eyes, he's like, fuck, that's just some stupid kid that was given to me. You were given to me like trash, right? You were abandoned by your parents. You know, that's where, that's like the idea of how he looks at Michael. And then he's like, so who are you? Do you see, understand how he is now? That's how he looks at him. Who are you? You were given to me, you're nothing. That's how he talks. It is clear to see. And he says, I did, I, I raised him, I fed him, you know, and he, and then he did actually, he part, he's part of the training that led Michael. So he gets part of the credit for that, but he takes all of it, you know, he takes it all. So, so, you know, so when he, when he, when he, didn't he once say that you were physically, emotionally abusive to him? I've never been abusive to him. Never have. But did he say that? Did he ever say that to your knowledge? I don't know whether he said that or not, but I hear the media keep hollering about abuse him. I never abused my son. Larry, I, can, I say, can I say something, Joe? Larry, do you yeah. wait, 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 bro. Let me handle this right here. Let me handle this. The media keep hollering about saying that I beat my son. That's not true. You know where this beating started? Beat started in the slavery days. They used to beat the slaves, and then they used to torture them. Oh my God. <laughs> And I talk about the reality, it's like, in reality, Michael was more like a slave to Joe, you know? And where does Joe go? He says, I wasn't beating him. You know, it was getting beat the slaves. When you're a slave in the slavery days, that's where the beating started. And it's like, because in his mind, Michael's like a slave to him, but he's like, I wasn't like beating my slave. You know, I was good. <laughs> I was a good slave master. I mean, it's, oh God, it's brutal. <laughs> Freaking brutal. That's where this beating started at, the, at these uh, slave masters. And that's where that come from. But hey, there's a lot of people in America, Larry. A lot of people in America spank the kids, you know. They, if they say they don't, they lie. They lie. They lie. <laughs> and was never beat it by me. Never beat okay. it at all. You're on record, Larry. <laughs> you would never beat it at all. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So look at, look at the way that those two are like right there after Michael died, like really close. Look at how the guy's talking about his son, the Michael Jackson, you know, admired by so many people, like the guy that's supposed to have done so much for the charities and the kids work and all the stuff. And look at how he's talking about him. <sighs> it's brutal. And then, so this is Joe Jackson. This is called uh, Last Time We Saw Joe by TMZ. They, so this would be uh, Last Time TMZ Recorded Joe Jackson. So listen to what he says here really quick about Michael. Jackson, how are you today? How are you doing? How are you? One quick question so I got to know the answer to this. You know, Quincy Jones is saying that Michael uh, Jackson uh, stole uh, a song uh, from Donna uh, Summer, uh, Billie Jean. Michael, but I raised Michael, he went summer, and Quincy Jones no better. No, I don't talk about it, no way. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, uh, I raised Michael, he's my son. That's why, and see, that's the thing. It's not that I'm his dad. I raised Michael. That's why he's my son. And it's like, it's like the little words, but that is actually what he's saying. Because that's who he is. The reality of why he's Michael's dad is because he raised him. He raised him. That makes me his, that makes him my son. I own him. Like, like, see how he owns him. I raised him. That makes him my son. That's that slave master mentality that he always had over Michael. And that was the problem. Like the abuse over Michael, there was definitely some physical abuse and stuff, but I don't think it would have been much more way crazier than a lot of normal families. A lot of families would have had similar type of abuse going on. And then I don't hear the others and brother and sister. I don't see them being that damaged from it. And if they were all damaged and dying from drugs and, you know, just totally whacked out. And then it, like, if there was, if there was one of them, is it was, is there, maybe it's just some of my little problems and stuff, but that's just normal life problems and stuff. They haven't like fully whacked out. None of them. I don't, not that I could see. And so it's like, well, he would have, oh, Latoya, <laughs> Latoya, <laughs> oh, there was one, <laughs> Latoya. Okay, but, <laughs> but she's even kind of some form of it came back to reality somehow, tried to get back in the family, you know, in the family scene and stuff. And she's, you know, so 
And then, so that's the kind of thing. It's like, well, if it was so bad, then she wouldn't have really worked her way back into the family and try to be come back as a Jackson and all the defender of Michael and all this stuff, right? So it's just crazy. So what I'm tr ba mainly just trying to show here is like I've been showing these smoky things, and it's like look at how smoky talks about Michael Jackson. Boy, I could show you other stuff. I, every time when you hear him talking about Michael, that is the thing. He's really talking. He talks well of Michael. And uh, this though. This is beyond weird, and it's and, and it shows it came right at the time when Michael died. You're getting all the weirdness, and then also at the time now Joe's like later in his life here. Now he's getting ready on he's basically on his deathbed here at this time. Um, still at this time he's not reflecting back. You know, no, no, no. I raised Michael. He's my son. I own him. I own. I'm the Jacksons. I'm the, I own the Jacksons name because that's the thing with him. That's why he always, then he always brings it back to Michael's a Jackson because he is the Jackson and he owns the Jackson name and the legacy and the stuff with that. What that makes him the Jacksons, you know. And that's where he's always like Jackson, Jacksons. It's it's crazy, but you can see it when you see the reality of the, who it is and all this stuff. It's pretty obvious to see that. You know, it's hard, you know, it's hard to see it before when, you know, because Michael's raised a Jackson. But now, when you actually start looking at it, it's like, oh, and now I can show you his father to show you the, the contrast, too, to between his real parents and to how these parents who raised him, how they speak, to how the other people speak about him. And then you can see how Michael acted and all, how he spoke about Joe. Listen to how he speaks about Diana Ross and stuff, you know. And it's, it's there. All of it's there. And so, this stuff, we're, we're going to get this moving. And this is going to come out. Okay, guys, we'll talk to you later. Bye.